CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quickcast. Let's take a look at today's top stories off the top tower trouble in the city of Miami. A man posed as a worker and climbed a cell phone tower. That man was on that tower for hours as police and fire workers worked to get him down safely. CBS News Miami's Anna McKelster has more on this bizarre rescue. An absolutely bizarre sight this morning here in Miami. A man impersonating a T-Mobile worker scaling a cell phone tower. Take a look at how high this is. He climbed that whole thing looking like Spider-Man. An unbelievable sight this morning. And this all started around 7 a.m. on Northwest 29th Street and 13th Avenue. Police say T-Mobile called them after this man started climbing the tower. He was saying that he was a T-Mobile worker and then tried to get the real worker to come up with him and enjoy the view. Crisis negotiators worked for hours to get him to come down, and he eventually did around 11 a.m. He apologized and Right now, the uh, negotiating team is, is talking to him. He is in our custody. However, we haven't handcuffed him yet. He's exhausted. Obviously, he was up there for, for many hours. Uh, we're just talking to him, seeing what the purpose was, getting more information on, on what caused him to do what he was doing. Police have not yet released the identity of this man. They do say he will be facing charges. What those charges are is still unclear at this time. But for now, reporting from Miami, Anna McAllister, CBS News, Miami. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, you can even see that camera shaking. It is hot and it is windy, but we are tracking even more changes. Next Weather meteorologist Cindy Pressler has it all. Very warm today. Yeah. It did hit 90 degrees, so really no surprise there. It is sticky and it is very windy. Wind gusts near 40 miles per hour, but we're going to see some pretty big changes coming up in the next few days. Breezy tonight with the line of showers coming through. Right now the line looks very impressive, but it will weaken by the time it gets here. That's going to linger into tomorrow morning and then cooler, drier air starting tomorrow already. Temperatures only reaching into the upper 70s, but it's these overnight lows for a couple of nights. You might need a jacket or a sweater again. Hard to believe. I thought we were past that, but no, we're going to kind of slide back into that for a couple of days. So here comes the cold front. The line of showers and storms out ahead of it. Pretty impressive. We had some warnings out of this. There's a tornado watch across northern parts of Florida right now. But again, this front will weaken as it moves to the south and east. All the energy will stay to the north. So even though getting some rain with a little bit of thunder and lightning in the Tampa area, by the time it gets this far south, these little showers will break up. So we're going to maybe get a few hundredths of an inch of rain out of this and then about it. But this wind, my goodness, out of the southwest, gusting to near 40 miles per hour. Right now, 18 gusts to 29 miles per hour. So that south-southwesterly flow bringing in the humidity and also the very, very warm temperatures. So these gusts are producing this wind advisory. That will end at 8 o'clock tonight because by that time, the front will be already pushing through. So let's time this out. Little showers, 8, 9, 10 o'clock, a few prefrontal showers. And as the front comes in overnight. We'll see some showers in the early morning hours. And again, this is just going to be some rain showers. We're not expecting any severe weather with this, but it's the cooler, drier air coming in behind that will make a huge difference. The normal low for this time of the year is 68 degrees. Look at this by Friday morning and Saturday morning. Overnight lows in the lower 60s. My goodness, so we're gonna need that jacket or the sweater. Again, a couple of mornings at least if you're gonna be out early walking the dog or taking a jog. So tomorrow's highs, temperatures of 79 degrees with some morning showers dry by the afternoon and what a beautiful week it's going to be heading into the weekend. Looks like a great weekend. Thank you, Cindy. A tragic situation in Southwest Miami Dade. Miami police say that a woman in her 80s fell into a pool. Chopper 4 was over the scene. This is along Southwest 123rd Street and 74th Street. The woman was rushed to the hospital where she was later pronounced dead. A plea for help from police and family members. An elderly couple was killed in their home. CBS News Miami's Joan Murray tells us what happened. This is a murder mystery still being unraveled and Fort Lauderdale police need the public's help to try to solve it. It happened March 22nd at this home on Southwest 30th Terrace in Fort Lauderdale. That's when the bodies of Claudette and Major Melvin, both in their 80s, a wonderful couple, 
who've been married over 60 years and also had spent 50 years in this home. They were found murdered. Now, Fort Lauderdale police want to find the car that this couple drove. That car was stolen. It is a 2014 Red Ford Fusion. It had prior damage on it on the back bumper and a side panel. We spoke to the daughter of the couple about how devastating this loss has been. Angry. Yeah. I'm so numb. I the can't power. feel. Yes, we're angry. We're angry. We're very angry. We're still trying to wrap, wrap our minds about how can we, who would, who did, why. Crime Stoppers now offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. And coming up at 5 o'clock, we'll look at the whys behind these murders police are exploring. Was it a crime of opportunity? Was it greed? Was it someone they knew? In Fort Lauderdale, Joan Murray, CBS News, Miami. New video now giving us a glimpse inside Sean Diddy Combs Los Angeles mansion. This was during last week's law enforcement raid. The video was shared by the mother of Combs sons. It shows law enforcement making their way onto the property with three trucks and at least 10 armed officers. At one point, his son Justin and Kristen Combs were handcuffed. You could also see what appeared to be a drone flying around the residence. The raid was part of the ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Now at four, the search is on for survivors in Taiwan. This is following the strongest earthquake to rock that island in 25 years. The 7.4 magnitude quake killed at least nine people and hurt hundreds more. CBS News Miami's Lee Mishkin has the report. A shocking scene as rescuers race to save people from a collapsed building in Taiwan. This dramatic video shows the moment it fell. The deadly earthquake hit as commuters were making their way to work in school on the island of 23 million people. Landslides and debris shut down highways. The impact so strong it was felt in neighboring China, sending school children running. Others in Taiwan took cover with protective gear. Authorities issued tsunami warnings in Taiwan and Japan. Both have since been lifted. I've felt some earthquake, but nothing like this. Yoli Seipang had just arrived from California. She was in her hotel room when the 7.4 magnitude quake woke her up. The whole room was shaking. Crews have worked around the clock to rescue dozens of people trapped inside buildings, tunnels, even a coal mine. As night fell in Taiwan, authorities warned of more tremors in the days ahead. And the White House said the U.S. is ready to offer assistance. Leia Mishkin, CBS News, London. The economic fallout from the quake has yet to be calculated. The island is home to Taiwan's semiconductor manufacturing, a major supplier of chips and apples. Powerball mania from coast to coast, where the jumbo jackpot stands right now when we come back. Loneliness among seniors declared an epidemic in the United States. But when people don't have that companionship, and it impacts their overall health. You must be Rosemary, right? That's right. But could interactive robots and pets provide the solution, and at what cost? Oh, it's just a lot more interactive than I'm always expecting. I'm Larry C. Where two questions will answer. Who's paying for these high-tech friends, and does this cure for companionship come with security risk? Everything you tell me always stays between the two of us. Tomorrow at 5.30. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quick Cast. Surveying the damage, a second day of severe storms leaves a trail of destruction across multiple states. There were a dozen reports of tornadoes touching down, and this is stretching from Alabama to Ohio. That includes a small city called Sunbright in northern Tennessee, and that is where we find CBS News Miami's Dave Milkoff. Destructive and powerful winds barreled through parts of West Virginia Tuesday, including downtown Charleston and to the west in Hanging Rock, Ohio. Campers on their side. Oh, dear Lord. Violent winds decimated this RV park. This literally took 15 seconds. Those violent storms hammered a dozen states Tuesday, tearing neighborhoods to shreds. At the University of Kentucky in Lexington, the winds were so extreme, this student was knocked off their feet. At 517, 
our first outdoor war warning sirens went off across the city. Violent storms around Louisville left behind so much damage, the area now has a huge cleanup project to tackle. I will be declaring a state of emergency uh, for the entire Jefferson County. The high winds not just causing damage to homes and businesses, but also mayhem on the roads from Louisville to Jeffersonville, Indiana, where big rigs proved no match for the winds where this driver was fortunately able to escape. Back here in Tennessee, residents in Sunbright were shocked to see the wreckage left behind. Well, it's just a gut punch to, to see your town and see these old buildings just demolished. The tornado likely struck just after 5.15 p.m., leaving the local funeral home in ruins and the owner stunned. I really didn't think a whole lot about it. I was really surprised when, you know, when I got up here and seen all this damage. Yeah, that funeral home is right on the other side of this building, right in the heart of town of just 500 people. It came apart. It crushed these two cars right here, and people were almost sucked out of their houses on this street. But the tornado warning came out. They had 15 to 20 minutes worth of warning, and that saved lives here. Nobody was killed. Dave Malkov, CBS News in Sunbright, Tennessee. A significant rate decrease has been approved for FPL residents. Customers, this is heading into this year's peak season for electricity use. Florida's Public Service Commission approved the adjustment as the cost of natural gas plummets. It'll save consumers $662 million through the end of 2024. Households in South Florida that consume a typical amount of electricity will pay about eight bucks less beginning in May. The savings follow a decline of nearly $7 a month that took effect in April. Happening tonight, the Jumbo Powerball Jackpot will be once again up for grabs. So good luck to you if you're playing. The jackpot stands at $1.09 billion. The pot has been growing all year without a grand prize winner since New Year's Day. The lump sum option is worth $527.3 million. And you can watch tonight's drawing right here on CBS News Miami at 11. We are following several stories for you this afternoon, so here's a look at what's coming up on CBS News Miami at 5. We are just five days away from a rare solar eclipse. South Florida isn't in the path of totality, but that does not mean we won't get a show. What you can expect starting at 5. That's the CBS News Miami Quickcast. I'm Nasha Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami and have a fantastic day.